Hi, I'll just introduce, sorry, wrong one. I'll just introduce myself. Um, I'm Melissa McCulloch. I am the acting team leader for the communities team um, within East Ayrshire. So I don't sit within planning or community planning. Um, I'm from a community development background um, and I'm based within um, vibrant communities. I have a team of um, nine um, community workers. Uh, we've been actually one of the fortunate authorities where we have um, continued to invest in our um, community work staff. So uh, we've still got community workers that are out there supporting um, every community within East Ayrshire has a, a, a dedicated community worker um, supporting them. Some of the main um, focus for my team is um, um, the work we do with community councils, our capacity building work within our communities, um, the community asset transfers that we help um, community groups um, take on within the communities, participatory budgeting as well as the, the, the key focus for us at the moment is the development of community-led action plans. Um, and that's what I'm going to focus on um, this part of the presentation before I hand over to my colleague, um, John, who will explain about the, the joint work that we've been doing between um, planning and um, the, the communities team. So the community-led action plans um, within East Ayrshire, um, it's a really, really intensive community engagement process. What we do um, is we go into communities and we ask um, the local community councils to write out um, to all the groups to see if they want to develop a community-led action plan. So 18 communities out of our 32 now um, in East Ayrshire have decided that they want to take that forward. We uh, develop a, a steering group, so the community comes together, develops a steering group and then the sent out to every single household within their community gets a questionnaire about their community that they get the chance to fill in. It's the same questionnaire we use all the time because it's been tried and tested now and it works. And what we look for is a 40% response rate from those questionnaires coming back. And that's a figure that we've really kind of held on to so that we know that there's a mandate there from the community that they want to take part in this process. The steering group, as well as doing the questionnaires, um, they carry out a whole host of um, community stakeholder interviews. They develop a community profile, and this is all working towards uh, one of the main events, which is the um, community event, and they publicise that, and they invite the whole of the local community to come along, and basically what they're doing at that event then is they are voting for the priorities that's come out of all of the surveys, they're voting for the priorities and it's those priorities that eventually um, end up within the, the Community Lead Action Plan. Once um, the, the, we have the community event, the action plan is then launched and the community group invite key council departments along as well as other community planning partners and other third sector organisations to come along, sit around the table with them and see who can help them to um, achieve the priorities that they've identified within their plan. So it's a really robust system and it's completely community-led. The only support that we provide them with is the, the establishment of their steering group and we've committed to the design of the plan for them as well. Um, but everything else, it, it's the community that's leading on that. So some of the, the kind of achievements of the, the plans so far, as I've just said, we've got, we've got 18 plans that have been launched, and I know it says 19 there, but we've got one thematic plan that we've just helped the local community with. Um, that was for the East Ayrshire Church's Homelessness Action, and they've just developed a plan on homelessness and um, addiction as, as well. When I was listening to some of the, the earlier presentations um, and some of the comments being made about seeing the, the same old faces at some of the, the events, we found that by doing this process that we really are getting a lot of new people um, and round, sitting the t round the tables, um, people that wouldn't traditionally come along and engage um, with us and that is because we're not just targeting the community councils and the registration established groups, um, 
where their community workers who are in the communities working, they've got a really, really good connection with the communities, they've got a good relationship, and they're really able to promote the benefit of the community-led action plans and use some examples from other communities where it's really helped to transform their communities. So we are seeing new faces um, round the table. Other um, outcomes that are coming uh, from is that there are a lot more um, groups um, up and running um, in East Ayrshire now. At the end of the community action plan process, the groups let us know whether they want to stay together um, as a constituted group, whether they just want to go back to their respective organisation and that is completely fine, or whether they want to be a wee bit more formalised and become incorporated. Um, whether that's um, becoming a SCIO, um, which is the Scottish Charitable Incorporated Organisation, whether they want to become a, li a company limited be guarantee, um, and that's something that our community work staff help them to work through that process, um, and we do a whole host of training with them, committee skills training, governance training, so we don't just walk away from the groups that's when the hard work um, really starts. So we really do try and build their capacity at that stage. Um, and I've got some great examples of the communities um, basically shifting from being reactive um, to proactive and to come into the council and other um, community uh, planning partners to kind of ask for services to be delivered within their communities, specifically when it's looking at tackling inequality um, within communities. So um, one of the, the, the key things we are finding that's coming out as well is the amount of activities and events that's happening within our communities as well now, as well as um, the actual look of communities. Village appearance is one of the key themes that is coming up time and time, and ag time, and time again um, within the action plans. So I'm just going to, we've, we've got three localities within East Ayrshire as I said before, we've got 18 communities who have developed their own plans now. I would be here all day if I was to go sit and go through them all. So I've just focused in on um, a couple of the communities, which is going to tie in um, nicely with um, some of the work that John's going to um, speak about in a wee minute. So in um, New Milnes, um, the, the group there um, decided that they were wanting to stay together as a group they were want to firstly constitute and then they decided they were want to become a SCIO. So we helped them to do all their training, uh, to build the capacity and um, they set themselves up as New Mountain Regeneration Association. They really decided that um, they wanted to concentrate on their promotion of themselves within the community and their branding and their social media. Um, so they have set themselves up, if anybody wants to go and have a wee look after this, it's called Love New Mountains. Um, and whenever there's a community event on now, they sell their own merchandise. Um, the, the, that first photo there is um, Mad Hatter's Tea Party that they had a float for the gala day that they organised. Um, they have also been successful in applying for participatory budgeting um, monies. They were a pilot within East Asia, one of the first communities to take that forward. And these... Um, Planters and the bins are when you're driving through the village in your mounds, um, they're absolutely everywhere now. So we like, like to have our plan colleagues to take that forward. Um, one of the main projects, well, in fact, um, it, it's been massive for them, was it come up in their action plan that not a lot was happening within uh, the community. They wanted more events. So they decided they were really want to focus in on um, the local economy and to promote tourism as well, and they decided that they were going to develop um, the New Mills Food Festival. So it's in its third year now. This year there was over 8,000 people come through the door on the Saturday. There was over, over 60 local um, produce suppliers um, came along to sell um, some of their wares. And then on the Sunday this um, year as well, they had a, a craft festival. So they've really expanded and um, diversified um, and they're an, a great example of um, <coughs> community capacity building um, and um, community empowerment within that community and that all came from the development of their community led action plan. Um, just right next door to New Milnes is a smaller uh, village called Darvel 
and they're focusing in on they want to keep their village um, nice and um, clean, green and vibrant. They're doing a lot of litter picks. Um, us as a council, we provide them with their, their, little, their litter picking. Um, and we're supporting them as well through um, the leader's budget to the way to develop the town square. So we're working with colleagues for planning to assist them to do that as well. Our outdoor amenities department are in there working with that group. Um, they've taken ownership of, it's called the West End Garden, as you, you drive in. So um, they've been provided with the tools from outdoor amenities um, so they can keep that nice and um, clean and tidy and nice and vibrant. And they're focusing in on their community events as well. So just leading into our Lloyd from that, um, and East Ayrshire, we've recently um, just developed our local outcomes improvement plan. Um, and part of that, the community-led action plans are, um, are key um, to that. We, the, our LOIP has aligned to our three um, community plan del delivery plans. Um, and we really have taken a three-tiered approach around that. Um, as I've just said, um, the community-led action plans are central to it. The locality plans have just been developed as well, and they've just been published. And the steering groups have been invited to sit around that table, along with community planning partners and the, our um, other council um, agencies and organised agencies. And um, we've focused in um, on targeted localities as part of that in East Asia. We have 10 areas um, that are in the first not to 5% um, SMID areas. So we're really focusing in on those areas where um, inequality is really, really um, bad. So the community-led action plans are being used within all our strategic planning documents now within East Ayrshire. We're really recognised as a council and we're listening to what our communities are telling us. And my colleague John is just about to tell you how the local, the community led action plans are now helping to inform some of our um, place making as well. So I'll pass over to John. Thanks, Melissa. Um, find my bearings here. Right, click. Okay. So, <coughs> place making uh, in the local development plan in 2017, um, five main population centres uh, in Stairshire um, were identified. Where a lot of the uh, priorities for development were already well known to the council and had, had come out of uh, various studies that had been done, uh, various consultations and work that had been done, and what an existing documents were brought together. Um, uh, into the, the place making plans for, uh, if I can tell this one here, this one for uh, Kilmarnock, town centre. Um, but also within the local development plan, there's a commitment to roll out place making to uh, all of the community council areas across East Ayrshire. Um, where I suppose an awful lot of that information wasn't known, so it was clearly a need to, to look at uh, how we drill down into that information how we identify what the priorities are and bring these priorities from local communities into uh, the local development plans as supplementary guidance, which is uh, what uh, was intended in the local development plan. Um, so looking at the obvious mechanism for doing that was the fact that uh, our colleagues in vibrant communities were developing community-led action plans, um, and that the community-led action plans had an awful lot of information in them, which was about priorities for space, uh, and improving space within local communities. Um, there was clearly a requirement to build on that, uh, so we developed a process for doing that. Uh, and this is our uh, schematic uh, process flowchart for placemaking. And the key question at the top says, is there a community-led action plan or is there not? Um, and if, if there is, it makes life an awful lot simpler. Because um, you don't have to do any of the green stuff then. Um, community led action plans uh, and the groups that are currently existed and the capacity building work that's already been done made a, a wonderful benchmark for us taking forward. Um, but it did mean that we had to do an awful lot of work in terms of converting the, uh, 
the information that was in, which was in very broad terms in the community-led action plans, into things that were more specific, identifiable, and able to be categorised in terms of uh, spatial priorities. Um, and what that meant was working quite closely with the groups, uh, coming along to their meetings, doing transects through their villages, um, and we had a, what I'm describing as a, a listening exercise, which, uh, a, and it's called talking pictures, is that all we do is put up maybe about 100 different pictures based on what's in the community-led action plans and the priorities for space within them, and, and allowing people to talk about them, to find out what it is that are the actual problems that are behind it, where are the specifics that we can identify, and maybe some of the problems that exist, uh, because I think a fundamental thing I want to talk about in a minute is that relationship building, and people have already mentioned this in a few of the presentations, relationship building is absolutely key to this, uh, for people to feel comfortable to tell you all about the place they live in, because it's a very personal thing to them. Um, but I find that the Talking Pictures is really, really good at that, and folk enjoy doing it because often even members of the same community are learning things about their community by hearing other people talk about them. Um, so draft maps are developed from the information that we gain from that. Uh, and before we go any further, there's another group of people that we need to create relationships with. This is a very early stage at the moment. We've only just uh, finished three pilots in relation to uh, developing uh, placemaking plans in this particular way. Um, and the key to that learning process that's going on is for other council officers across the council and across partner organisations and how they start to relate to this notion of communities being able to identify their own priorities. Um, because key to that is, and somebody mentioned earlier, managing expectations. I prefer not to think about managing expectations, I prefer to think about informing expectations. Because, you know, people will have expectations uh, and you can't manage what is on inside people's heads. All you can do is provide them with the information that allows them to have an expectation and for that expectation for them to be realistic to them. Um, so, in order to do that, we go to all the departments, roads for example, if, if people have identified in the community-led action plan that they're, they're not particularly happy with the traffic that runs through the main street of the, the community, we go and talk to roads before we come out of the community and say, well, is there any realistic, and you will find out a lot of information from the roads, well, they'll usually bang their head off the desks uh, in, in roads uh, and say that there's no budget for that. Um, but what you can do is that you can say to people, you can, you can find out what alternatives there are. You can find out a lot more that you can take to the meetings with the groups and say, we know this is a problem um, and we know that you want to have a bypass to your village, but there are other things that you can consider to inform that process. And there are other things that you can, you can latch on to. Um, so you might want to think about, well, let's rather than put in your plan that you want to have a bypass, let's say we need to investigate what the, the realistic, what the opportunities are for improving the traffic flow through the village. And what I always find, and I know people are sometimes quite uh, reticent to go to communities and, and speak to them, but I always find that, that most people are fair and reasonable. And if you give people as much information to make a decision as possible, then you'll get a fair and reasonable response. Where the problem lies quite often is when you go to people and don't give them enough information, um, and, 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 and that you know, creates uh, what are they hiding? Why do we not know about this? You know, what's their agenda? Um, but if you don't have an agenda, give them everything that you can. Uh, so, we go through the loop of developing the map, refining the map, uh, uh, it goes to cabinet, gets lodged, and um, it becomes part of local development plan. This is a tool we use in making it. Uh, and having it come together, which records the place is the quality indicators from Scottish Government across the top, and the sort of themes that generally come out of community action plans down the, uh, down the side, streetscape improvements, priority goals, and such and such. And we populate this as we go along with the community. We uh, also the bits in blue are where we've gone speaking to people in particular departments to find out what their opinions are. So it's a, it's a working document which we populate and move through as we go on. Uh, this is New Mullins. Uh, we've already heard about uh, the work in New Mullins. Um, and this is the start of the formulation of their, their, their map, which is 
come on the priorities in the plan. That's the other side of New Mills. And also along with that uh, comes the detailed priorities that people have identified, um, which are pr probably wider than what's in their community-led uh, action plan, um, because they identify specific buildings and specific sites and particular uh, points of interest that they, they want to see included. Um, So, I didn't set some questions, I suppose, in this, and I thought rather than try and address them as we were going forward, it might be easier just to put them up there and to talk about some of the themes and the experiences that, that we've had with the things that are important in doing this engagement. People mentioned relationship building at the start. It's not just relationship building with the communities, it's relationship building with people that have to work together um, when you bring community planning together uh, or, or community development together with planning, um, there's a shift there that people are uh, thinking, well, my job is going this way and their job is coming this way. There's an overlap. Who's going to be doing what? Um, there's an awful lot, I think, of uh, reassurance that has to be given. Um, also, within the communities, there's an awful lot of reassurance that has to be given that this isn't some extra thing that you're making us do. Is it, how is it going to be a benefit to us to be involved in, in these kind of processes? Um, I'm having difficulty seeing it, you can't see it on the screen here. Uh, trust, people have mentioned trust already, informing expectations. And encouragement isn't just for the communities themselves, but encouragement is for the, community, the groups that are involved in the council, um, uh, and recognition that this is a learning process. It's something that um, you're not going to necessarily get right first time. You're going to have to take steps along the way to think about how it's working. Have we learned anything? Do we take that learning and feed it back into the process and change the way we're doing things? That's where piloting becomes important. Pilot projects we found have been really, really useful um, because they give us the opportunity to take things back change and amend the, 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 the flow chart we did previously. Uh, fundamental to all of this is that there is follow through. There isn't any point in going through these processes if people don't see change, which is why it's important to get the buy-in from the departments whose budgets may need to bend to address particular priorities in communities as they come up through uh, and into the local development plan. Um, consider measures of success. People have talked about, I think, uh, quantitative uh, measures. Um, qualitative ones are equally as important. Um, and whilst we saw the events in New Mills, um, we've seen some of the physical things that have been identified in the, their placemaking plan. Um, but there are also these kind of things that come back from communities where people have uh, pride, strength, uh, developing the local economy, enabling residents not only from New Melons but East Ayrshire to become actively involved in volunteering. That's about the kind of quality aspects and you can't kind of record them on a, on, a, on a chart or a graph. You need to actually go and speak to the people and, and sit down, build relationships and get, and that's the way that kind of information really free of those backwards and forwards uh, to you. So I hope that's been useful. Um, do you have anything to add, Melissa, to that? Well, thank you for coming. Thanks very much. Thank, thank you. you very much.